Hey millennials, if you are looking to get into the entertainment industry, we are at the perfect event at WeWork in Northern Liberties. We are at the first stop on the Moguls and Media Tour right here in the city. They have a celebrity panel, interactive games, and food and drinks. I mean, what more could you ask for? I actually have to work the event, so I gotta go, y'all. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Well, while Aaliyah runs off to work, don't worry. Me and Darrell have everything covered, right? Yeah, we're going to check out the red carpet right now. Let's go. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm here at Moguls in Media with the one and only Quincy Q. Harris. If you guys don't know him from the Q on Fox, then you probably know him as a radio personality, QDZ. So, how's it going? How have you been? Great. Everything is amazing. Things are good. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm not a, a media mogul, but I'm going to find out from the panel here today. Emmy Award winning producer, NFL film star, he does it all. And he's local here to Philadelphia. He's from New Jersey, Mr. Cortland Bragg. Cortland, what's up, man? How's it going? I'm doing well, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. So tell us kind of what inspired your love for film and for media. I love storytelling. And then that kind of helped transition me to putting sports and storytelling together. And that's why I ended up at NFL film. Hey guys, I'm here at the Piazza in Philadelphia at the Moguls and Media event. And I'm here with Mariah and Keisha of the PR Alliance. So, Keisha, tell me, how did you guys get started in this? Well, we've been friends for a really long time, um, and then we just started sharing our dreams and aspirations with each other, and we realized me coming from a writing strategic communications background and wanting to do PR, and her coming from a broadcasting background and wanting to do the same thing, that it just merged so perfectly. We are here at the Moguls and Media event live at the Piazza. I am here with Christine Hazel, season 14, Hell's Kitchen contestant. So Christine and I were talking, kind of prepping for this whole thing. Um, we were talking about a program that she did at, the Philadelphia, at a Philadelphia school, Kensington High School. Tell us about that culinary program. So I was able to go and do an after school program and teach inner city kids how to cook the basics um, and really give them I guess a way to rely on themselves, know how to make things on their own, fresh pasta, how to make sauces from scratch, they, and soups, everything. And they really took a, a liking to it, and I'm hoping to do the program again. We'll see. Chase your dreams. You're going to be scared. Keep going. You're not going to have everything that you need right away. It will, it will never be perfect, but keep going after your dream. Write it down and get laser focused and get, get people that will support you, uh, get people that have done it, uh, get mentors and, and work really hard. As you can see, the Moguls and Media event is still going on inside behind us, but if you missed out, no worries, right? Guys, there's still three more tour dates in New York, D.C., and Atlanta. Visit mogulsandmedia.com for tickets, but until then... That's all the time we have. So thanks for watching MiamiPhilly.com, where something's always new. And everything is always Philly. <laughs>
Joe Williams is the welding instructor at A. Philip Randolph. We have companies calling my school, calling my students, more than I have students. I have several several companies from, from PTR Baylor to the Philip Shipyard to L3 Communications to SEPTA, all wanting to get my seniors to come work for them, to be employed by them. So it's like I have more job opportunities than I have students. He teaches welding engineering, the basic foundations of the welding industry. His students learn how to manipulate metal and steel, wearing protective helmets, fire-resistant jackets and gloves, and steel toe boots. This is called a what? ID. This right here is a what? The side. These lines represent what on the blueprint world? Whoa. This tells you to do what? Whoa. This is the what? Yeah. This is a foundation in blueprint reading. Foundation and all the blueprint symbols rest what they what they rest upon. And William says his students must learn how to read blueprints. Welding is something that is a career. You have it for the rest of your life. You'll be able to implement these skills you learn here at Randolph and take them right into the workplace. I try to teach my students that they their goal, their objective is to be engineers. We need more engineers in the world. And knowing how to weld and read blueprints kind of sets you off for being an engineer. Think about Randolph. This four-year program. These 1,120 hours that they get here is free. It's in the Philippine public school system. So Randolph, A. Philip Randolph Square and Technical High School, is a public school. So you can come here and learn all these trades for free and leave it without owing the college or the government $90,000 and have a high debt. So upon leaving here with certifications in the job, you're leaving here with no debt. A. Philip Randolph has special meaning for Williams because he's a graduate. I, I myself, ran around the same building, the same desk, the same machine, the same blackboard. So it was kind of uh, eye-opening when I had the opportunity to come back and teach in the same classroom where I graduated from and give back to these young men. I've turned some kids' lives around. And I, I say that if you can show a kid how to make, you know, eight, nine hundred thousand dollars a week, that's one less kid I gotta worry about being on the street. Every kid that goes to work straight from high school is one less kid that is out there doing something he hasn't been doing out there in the street. I'd like to pursue my career as a SEPTA welder when I graduate. The atmosphere in the school is very good. Everybody helps everybody. The teachers give you extra help inside and out of school. So you can make your way through the through grades. Students get hands-on training in the culinary arts and how to be chefs and short order cooks. Here, come and take a look inside. And these students are learning how to be dentists. So this is exactly what would be occurring in the dental office with the dentist if the dentist were preparing the tooth for restoration. The fire academy at Randolph works directly with the Philadelphia Fire Department. There is a fire truck and ambulance inside the school to give students real life training as emergency medical technicians and firefighters. When students come out of high school, they're able to uh, apply to a private ambulance company or they have the opportunity when the fire department gives a test, they have uh, an opportunity to apply to the fire department. On this day, the students perform a drill showing us what they do if a call came into the station for a house fire. So you will have on the engine, you will have four members, including the officer. They, each uh, member will have their gear set on each side uh, where they position to get into the uh, engine and respond to a call. So they will have to get fully clothed and then they'll respond. They arrive on the scene and it's a fire. It's a, a working fire, fire coming up out of the building windows. So then they'll jump off. Now the driver is gonna be the pump operator. He's gonna be the, the one to get the water to the guys. The other one, the officer and the other two uh, members are, one is gonna be on the tip and the other one is gonna be a search and rescue. And what you did see mocking was that it was a patient 
trapped inside unconscious. So they uh, assessed the patient, put the patient on oxygen or whatever needed to be done, and then they brought the patient out. Then the EMTs were sitting and arriving. They had packaged the patient up and they're getting it back and then reassess and continue assessing the patient, treatment, or whatever needs to be done until they take the patient back to the hospital. This program is awesome, awesome. It gives them real life uh, meaning. I mean, you get to assist and help patients, people in your community, rather it be family members or just be a total stranger, to, to have the knowledge to be able to, to help someone. I'm going to study to get my EMT-1 certification and my Fire-1 certification, and I'm going to become a paramedic. I like it a lot, and the shop just makes me want to come more and more every day and brings me back to class a lot, and it makes me, uh, it made me look forward to what we we're going to learn to the, for the next day. Davis Haynes is teaching his students in vending technology about cell phone repair and cell phone technology, plus robotics, electronics, and computer repair. The vending machines now are actually Windows computer-based vending machines. So they have a Windows computer, much like your laptop or your computer at home, or some of them run on a program, an uh, Android program, much like your, your tablet or even your cell phone does. And the machines run basically on an app, so the app controls everything about the machine. And Haynes says the jobs of the future in the vending machine industry are increasing every day. If you were to go to your ShopRite, you'd notice that there's a, a self-checkout there. All the technology in that, that, that ShopRite, the, the, the self-checkout, is this vending technology. So you can ring things up, uh, you can go downtown, use the uh, parking um, kiosk when you run your credit card through, vending technology. It has to auto authenticate somewhere. So I'm teaching my students the next generation of cashless payments with uh, their phones. So tablet-based things, touch screens, a lot of visual stuff. Um, a lot of them have uh, uh, cameras inside the vending machines that actually, when they walk up there, it takes a, a buyer of, a, of your face, of you, and knows all about you and knows what you bought. And they can cross-reference all that information and, and know the people's ages and their ethnicity and all that when they're buying stuff. And it helps you as a vendor to know what to put in your machines and what to keep in stock. So the possibilities are really endless for these students. I plan on taking what I learned from my teacher by operating the machines to start my own business to operate machines when I get older. And that's what the teachers, staff, and administrators are doing at A. Philip Randolph. They're inspiring students to be the leaders and businessmen and women of tomorrow. Welcome to Get Fit Philly, the show that helps you find the places to lose the pounds all around town. I'm your host, Amber Joy, and today I'm with registered dietitians Haley and Erica of MyVNutrition.com. I'm here, we're doing something new. Why? Because abs are made in the kitchen and we want to help you kick off 2017. So where do we start? Okay, so our first item is extra virgin olive oil. This is definitely a kitchen staple. Um, you definitely want to use extra virgin olive oil anytime that you're cooking, whether you're sauteing or you're roasting, uh, rather than butter or margarine. Um, it's loaded with omega-3s and it really does make a great base for also a salad dressing um, rather than any other type of dressing you may buy at the store. Next we have lemons. We love lemons. They're so versatile. You can use them in almost every dish. Citrus fruits provide that acidic flavor that helps to balance meals and also helps to tie in the natural flavors, enhance the natural flavors of foods. Instead of using salt that has a lot of sodium and um, doesn't have any nutrients, use use the lemons in place. Awesome. Okay, up next, this is one of my favorite things. We have yogurt here. What kind of yogurt do we have? Okay, so this is a Greek yogurt, and this brand is called Siggy's. We swear by it. It's only made of four ingredients. Um, this container is only 100 calories, and it's 14 grams of protein. So Greek yogurt is really great as a breakfast item, as a snack on the go. Um, you can pair it with any type of fruit to add the fiber, any type of complex carb, like dry cereal or granola, and really make a balanced meal out of it. Awesome. Up next, we have eggs. My favorite. 
favorite. Yes, yes. Eggs are perfect for breakfast, but also for dinner. They make such a quick snack too as hard boiled eggs. There are six grams of protein in one egg and they're cheap and who doesn't love cheap? So for 12 eggs, you can get them under $3. Here we have unsalted walnuts and pumpkin seeds. Um, nuts and seeds are great for any type of snack. Um, they're also great to add taste and texture to any dish. Um, they're loaded with omega-3s, which are great for brain fuel and cardiovascular health. Up next, last but not least. No, certainly not least are our greens. We always have greens in our fridge. Kale, romaine, spinach, but we love to put them in smoothies or as a base for your meal. And we also like to saute some with a little bit of olive oil and garlic in the beginning of the week. So we always have a, a healthy snack to grab or incorporate with the meal. Nice. So there you have it. Six grocery items that everybody should have in their kitchen for 2017. Haley and Erica of MaviNutrition.com can really help you figure out the science. They can teach you the reasons why these are amazing products. So make sure you look them up online. That's all the time we have here today on MyNewPhilly.com where something's always new and, and everything everything's is always silly. Hey guys, it's Yuval with Kite and & Key and today I'm taking you behind the scenes to check out Union Transfer's brand new sound system. We're gonna go have a meeting with them before we shoot next week. Let's go ahead and take a look, it's so cold. Well, I still have 15 minutes before my meeting. Maybe my friend Mac can help. He's just around the corner. Here it is. Come on in. Mac! Oh my god, you are, I'm so glad to see you right now. Look what happened. Can you help me fix this? Yeah, definitely. What kind of phone is it? It's an iPhone 6. Bust the screen? Yeah. Yeah, we can definitely fix this. You have what, 10 minutes? Yeah, perfect. Thanks. All right, let's do it. So is he actually going to get this done in 10 minutes? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, maybe less. How did you guys get this fast? I don't know. I mean, we're just licensed, trained, and certified. We've been doing it a long time. That's awesome. And when did you, how did you figure out that you wanted to do this? Just been an entrepreneur, started in college. So I've been doing it a couple years now and it just kind of took off. That's awesome. And did you just move to Philly to do this? Yeah, I've been here for a little over a year now. What makes you different than all the other people who are phone, doing phone repair? A lot. I mean, we offer the greatest discounts. We do a lot of stuff with social media and we have like different pricing options and we just cater to the customer. That's awesome. Tell, can you tell me a little bit more about the pricing options? For sure. So we have three different options. Uh, we have a regular, premium, and original. So some of the better ones come with mm -hmm. like the warranties and screen protectors. Right. And then we have all these different, you know, discounts that we offer as well. Cool. Do you offer any discounts on sparkling cases like that? <laughs> For sure. You know what? I tell you. I'd probably get you 50% off of that one right there. Oh my god, that's awesome. Thank you so much. You got it? Oh, he's done. Here you go, now you can make it to your meeting in time. Ah, uh, thank you so much. Well, that's all the time we have today on Mind You Philly, where something is always new. And, and everything is always new. Philly. Welcome to the Gents Manual. My name is Ursula Styles, and today I have with me Arrington from The Model Citizen, and I have my good friend James Crosby from Crosby & Co. And today, we're gonna be talking about the men's trends for spring, summer 2017, and what's hot, what's dope, how can they rock it, how can they include it into their own personal style and their wardrobe. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna start out with is light wash denim. How are you guys feeling about this trend? Uh, well, me, I think that denim is always a piece that will be relevant through time, no matter what trend comes or goes. You got the dark, dark jeans, then it goes light, then right. it's cycled hey, back. Now you got the stressed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. jeans, right. all kind of stuff. So I think it's a, it's a piece that's always going to be relevant. It's always going to make the top 10 trend list. That's that makes true. Sense. That's a good point. All right, next up, we have jackets around the waist. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm kind of half and half with this. I, I loved it during that grunge period, you know, <laughs> that Kurt Cobain, right. teen spirit situation. Right. It, it really rocked out well there. I think it's more of a lifestyle trend. Like, for example, rock, okay. rockers, I'm not rockers, uh, what do you call them, skateboard yes. people, right. that lifestyle hippie. Yeah. What's the point? You wear it? Are you cold or are you just wear it? <laughs> you, you have it in case you need it? All right. Next up, we have yellow. 
Now, we have plenty to say about this. <laughs> I guess it's in, I'm rocking the yellow. Yeah, so talk about talk about uh, Crosby, how you're so rocking your yellow. Yeah, I mean, these are bold. I don't think anybody could just wear a, a yellow rain jacket, but uh, you can accessorize, wear a shirt, wear a tie, you know, a yellow tie with a black suit. And you're doing it kind of in a muted right. kind so of way. I think it works for a color that's able to transition from feminine and masculine. It's yes. like a happy medium, right. unlike pink or lavender. And like I agree. That. So this, one is huge. Why? Because this is all that everyone is talking about yep. um, in the current fashion weeks that's happening for fall and winter 2017. And that is the Supreme and Vuitton collaboration. Some of the pieces are just amazing. beyond dope. Yeah, um, everything from a phone case that yeah. they have coming out with the Supreme and Vuitton logo on it to the trunk. Any any pieces that's a favorite of I yours? I love the glasses, the yeah. sunglasses. Yeah, the glasses dope. are well, think about What separates you know an ordinary thing like sunglasses or phone case, what makes it luxury? It's just branding, mm -hmm. you know, now it's high end. Right. That's yeah. a good point. But I think it matches well, and I think it's going to go right. far also. Yeah. I like them. I like the suitcases. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. That duffel bag, too. Whew. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for watching MyNewPhilly.com, where something is always new, and, and everything, everything is, is always, always Philly. Philly. guys, welcome to the fitting room where trend style and fashion in Philly are always our focus. I'm your host, Anne Rikini, and I'm here with Shola, my absolute favorite street style photographer in all of Philadelphia. <laughs> and we're here to tell you about street style, what it is, and how you can go from like, eh, to camera ready. So tell us, what is street style exactly? So street style is a type of fashion that is inspired by contemporary and urban living. So when I go out with my camera, I'm trying to look for kind of the perfect street style candidate, I'm looking for someone who embodies both urban and contemporary. So it's someone who's not just leaving the house in like name brand things and like something that's like relatively plain. I'm looking for someone who is like confident in what they're wearing and kind of ready to hit the streets with something cool on. Okay, so what we're wearing right now, it's not horrible, yeah. but it's a little basic, and I think we can do better. I think we can do a lot better. So where do you think would be a good place to start? Okay, the best place to start is with details. And one of the best details that you can use to elevate your style, to make it more street style, is all about the shoes. Okay, so some statement shoes maybe? Yeah, some statement shoes. Statement shoes, a lot of people think that statement shoes are just heels. That's not always the case. Um, but nothing's wrong with a good heel, as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, that's definitely the best place to start. All right, so let's see what we got. Okay, so I got my sparkly shoes on and I feel like I'm looking a lot better already. Honestly, like it's, it, the outfit is 10 times more interesting because anyone with the amount of confidence to throw on awesome jellies like that, I'm automatically there. I automatically want to take a picture. Okay, so I really love layers because they add so much dimension to an outfit and it's not really putting much on you, like a lot of bulk. It's yes. just functional. It's functional, especially here. You got a really nice jacket that is not only a good top layer, but also has some really great details that we were talking about before. Um, that are not just your awesome shoes. Something I really love this season is a good statement bag. The way that you wear it is it's almost like a piece of jewelry, but it's not. It's a bag. It's a bag. You can put stuff in. And see, we really completed this look without the use of jewelry. Neckties, really good investment. They seriously cost like a dollar or less. Add some to your wardrobe and hats, perfect for when you're having a bad hair day or to really finish an entire look. Hats are the perfect, like, even if you had kind of what we started off wearing, you add a hat to it, it's automatically elevated. Not a lot of people think that they're hat people, but it turns out that everyone's a hat person. So make sure you give that a try. Um, like, I don't know if you, we could get a hat on you right now. Um, you know, if I try really I'm hard trying. and believe in myself, I think I might be able to throw <laughs> that on. But it is something that I usually do. I throw, kind of throw my afro back, put a hat on, it works. Um, this purse, like you mentioned before about the jewelry, find something with a little bit more pop so when you're wearing all black or neutrals, it really sticks out. That's about all the time we have today for My New Philly, where something is always new and everything, everything is, is always, always Philly. Philly. 
Welcome to Gaberhood TV. My name is Brandon, and today I'm bringing you the exclusive from inside the Toasted Walnut. That's right, the place that you have been walking by for two years now is finally open. I'm gonna get the opportunity to talk with Denise Cohen, the owner, and then I will get to try some of the wonderful food that three-time chop champion, Chef Diana Saboteur, has cooked up for the Toasted Walnut. Come on with me. What do you hope and what do you see for the Toasted Walnut as being different um, from the rest of the bars that are in the neighborhood? Well, ba basically, we're putting the L back in the LGBTQ community. And we're open to everybody. We're, everybody's welcome. But there hasn't been a space since two, 2013 when Sisters closed. So while everybody is welcome in the, into the bar, we're going to be doing events and geared towards the lesbian community. So let's talk about the programming. Some of these bars, they have, you know, drag performances, uh, characters. Karaoke. Can we expect some of that stuff with the uh, toasted walnut? Yes, you can expect all that and more. Great. Okay. We had that first floor, we have our mezzanine, and we added the lights. All three bars were revamped and designed, and I went with more of an industrial city feel. Tell me the story on how you got the name toasted walnut. Would be something that has a classic feel to it, a classy feel. I also wanted the name of the street involved in it, you know, walnut. And what do you do when you go to a bar? You get toasted. Absolutely. Where on Walnut. Hey, Diana. Hi. How are you? How are you? Thank Welcome. you so much for having us. These are some of our hot items. You know, I, I like making Latin food. We discuss, like, you know, what her favorite um, menu items are, things that she likes to eat. Right. Um, and so, you know, we just put both of our ideas together, and this is what we come up with. Wow. Not too spicy. No, this is perfect. All right, so I got what I call the Latinized flatbread. Ooh. It's got a sofrito in it. Okay. And then it has like a shredded chicken, crushed black olives, um, a goat cheese spread, okay. caramelized onions. So then I will try one of these. I can see why you were a three-time chop champion. And you even beat Muhammad Ali's daughter, is that right? Yep, that's right. I beat the champ. You beat the champ. I beat the champ. I had to. She was, she was saying that if she won, she was going to brag <laughs> that she was a three-time chop champion winner. So I had to take her down. Can't be talking her first smack. knockout. That's right. There you go. <laughs> Had a great time at the Toasted Walnut. Highly recommend it. Bring your friends on down. Perfect food, wonderful decor. You couldn't ask for anything better, especially a new addition to our gayberhood. Next time you're thinking of going gay, make sure you check in with me. That's all the time we have for today on My New Philly, where something is always new and everything is always Philly. If you're happy to be here at Warm Daddy's for a night of acoustic show, I need you to make some noise. Hey, it's Sonny the Host, and you know this is another episode of Fly Tunes on My New Philly, where we're keeping a beat on the, what's going on in these Philly streets. Now I'm here at Warm Daddy's for a night of acoustic soul with Grammy-nominated artist and, and, and special brother of mine, Eric Robeson and Jeff Morrell. I respect and look up to both of you. I mean, Eric, you have done amazing things with music um, and the sound, your sound. Jeff, me and Jeff go back, people don't know this, but me and Jeff go back all the all the way back, like years. I know you have your soulful sound in your writing and in producing, but what inspires you? Like, what inspires, who inspired you and what inspires you? Well, life, I mean, just life in general. I, I believe, I don't believe in writer's block. I believe in writer's blindness. So the, the goal is to, to fight that. So even with my newest project, it's like whatever I see, I, I mean, I watch couples sitting here, I talk with you, and, and that's where I get my, my stuff from. A lot of times this conversation with my parents or actual real life situation with my wife and my kids, you know, I'm always pulling, I will pull from third grade heartbreaks if I need to, to, to get the idea out, you know what I mean? So I really pull from everything, man. I just, my goal really is just chase goosebumps. That's my only rule, you know what I mean? So, so the whole now I'm just always fishing for that feeling and when I get the feeling, that's when I complete it, you know, that's when I say, okay, I'm gonna get this out to the world. If it made me feel good, obviously it might make somebody else feel good. Your song literally saved a great night. I just wanted to shake a hand on that. You, you, your song, Dealings. And I'm not even going to say, but it was an awesome night. I just want to thank you again. Okay, thank you. All right, cool. Put it on Got Real. <laughs> Put it on Got Real, okay? I was like, oh, I don't have to say anything else. Everything's just going to say it for me. And it did. I appreciate it. With that being said, uh, anything else that Eric Robeson and that we are definitely going to search and look for that, that Eric Robeson has coming. I'm releasing three EPs this year. Uh, it's a, I'm doing a, a three uh, uh, EP trilogy this year, and the first one comes out in April. 
Next one will come out around July. The next one, the last one will come out in October. So uh, each one is a, a whole different concept album. But it's, uh, it's I'm pretty excited about it, man. I'm, I'm having a, I feel like I'm writing my, the best I've ever written, to be honest, right now. And Jeff, listen, I, they, they need to hear this chills and everything. So let us know yeah, what Jeff and Bell Man, hopefully I get a chance to, to spend some time with uh, my mentor, E. Robeson. Because, man, you know, after traveling with him for the last two years, man, this dude, man, has taught me a lot about this business and a lot about work ethic. That's the stuff you don't see. He's here. So y'all got some work to do. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up and get out of here. But y'all know what it is. This is Fly Tunes, me, Sonny, the host. And this is my new Philly where something's always new and everything is always... Always Philly. Always Philly. Always Philly.